1945, there were about 55 countries in the world. There are now 230 countries in the world. So there is a clear trend here that people want to live in an identifiable unit. People throughout the world are starting to revert back to their particular religious, linguistic, ethnic, or racial tribe. And they feel that their superficial appearance, or the way they talk, or their ideology, trumps that of a political association. So they want to be more with like kind and less with others that don't look like themselves. And it's, it's a dangerous precedent. People want flags. They want anthems. They want football teams, soccer teams. That all adds up to the idea that we could do things better ourselves. It's not supremacism, it's not uh, xenophobia, it's just the feeling that if a family can sort out its problems, why get the neighbours involved? Secession is one of many, many words used to refer to a process by which part of a larger polity becomes independent. The arguments for secession are that ultimately, if a people feel a common identity, and that's a settled majority view, uh, that in the end, they're gonna get it anyway. This sort of modern age of global corporatism, which goes hand in glove with globalism, goes hand in glove with a loss of national sovereignty, identity, so popular sovereignty is the backlash against all of those things. If you define it by the actual words, popular means a majority vote and sovereignty means the ability to create a form of government that reflects that vote. It depends on what is the moral, political, historical nature of the original association. Some associations deserve to be dissolved and some don't. And so the state that leaves that association, if it's leaving a bad association, then that is good and we admire that. If they're leaving a good one, then they're disrupting it and creating havoc for those who remain. It has been much more popular, especially in the Western world, because of the growth of identity politics. And so people are saying that I'm a particular ethnic group, I'm a particular religion, I have particular rights that supersede those of the mother country, so I should get a particular preference or an exemption in the law, and that creates this tribalism. So each person is retreating back into their tribe, and the political ties that bound tribes together are starting to uh, diminish. Nationalism has got a bad name because of its association with what happened with National Socialism across Europe in the 1930s. So we have a revulsion at a form of nationalism that turned into a complete hatred of everybody else. But there's always a risk that nationalism can become some very extreme form that says, you know, we hate our neighbours and, and we believe ourselves to be superior to them in every way. So clearly there are some risks with nationalism, but equally there's a risk with supranationalism because if you take away from people by passing up to higher authorities, you know, decision making, courts, whatever it may be, uh, then people say, well hang on, we're not in control of our own lives. We have to do something to get that back. A people, a nation has um, a right to govern its own uh, activities and affairs and therefore claims the right to become independent. You can see that in a, in a number of places where the borders of the group coincide pretty well with the borders of the state that they claim to or want to or aim to form. People actually want to have an identity and that's why you've got this growth and you can call it populism or nationalism or nationism or whatever it is, but that's why you've got the growth of it. You can argue that nationalism has its risks, supranationalism has its risks. If nationalism is accompanied by a full functioning democracy, then the risks of nationalism are very, very low indeed. There can be partial or complete or moderated or modified succession. The problem though is not really necessarily the degree to which an entity leaves the whole, but rather the conditions under which it leaves. Is it going to be violent? Is it going to be peaceful? 
and the effect that it has on the whole. When an uh, empire breaks up or there's a nationalist movement, the mother or the host country says it's not quite so simple. We own property or we have legal rights within your territory that you want to take away from us. Ultimately, Brexit is about getting back the ability to make our own laws, govern our own country, be the masters of our own destiny, have our own Supreme Court being supreme. Being anti-Brexit myself, I think it's very hard to find close parallels to what has happened and all the decision made by the Britons. And I think that in many ways they were, uh, a lot of people were deceived by uh, false information about the consequences of leaving. Catalans have far more cultural, linguistic motivation here. Not only do Catalans not have a state, but a lot of Catalans think that we do have a state, but it, it's against us. And the, the future of the Catalan language in particular is, is very bleak. Nothing, nothing in the world is forever. Everything can be changed. And ultimately, it is the will of people that changes things. And we have chosen in the West that our method by which people express that change is through the ballot box.